Australia is home to many animal species, perhaps the most famous of which are koalas, kangaroos, and emus. These majestic animals are just few of thousands of creatures native to the country. Unique animals exist not only on Australia's landform, but on its coasts, especially in the Great Barrier Reef. Here, thousands of fish, snakes, turtles, and whales coexist. Unfortunately, many have been affected by climate change and other human activities. Today, we will be exploring two of the most unique aquatic species of the Australian coastal region and the effects that human activities have had on them. These are the leafy sea dragon and the spotted handfish. I hope you enjoy. Leafy sea dragon, scientific name, Lycodorus aquis, are named for their plant-like appearance. Their bodies are adorned with leaf-shaped appendages. This makes them perfectly outfitted to blend in with the seaweed and kelp formations that they live amongst in Australia's waters. They look just like floating pieces, pieces of seaweed. Neither predator nor prey can easily recognize them, making them very evolutionarily adept to their situation. Leafies are generally brown to yellow in body color, and their appendages are olive tinted. They swim between 3 and 50 meters below the ocean surface. Their leaf-like structures are not used for swimming, just for camouflage. To move, the species uses two fins, one pectoral and one dorsal, that are so thin that they are almost transparent. Leafies have long, pipe-like snouts with small, terminal mouths. They feed on plankton, mycids, and other small crustaceans. Their heads are relatively large compared to their very small mouths so they are able to concentrate enough pressure in their mouths to easily suck in their prey. Leafies are closely related to seahorses and pipefish. They may be an intermediate species between these two groups of fishes. Interestingly, they can get to be over one foot long, much longer than the average seahorse or pipefish. Leafies have only been recorded between Kangaroo Island, South Australia, to Rottnest Island, Western Australia. They thrive in these temperate waters. Male leafies are responsible for childbearing. Male leafies have a spongy patch on the underside of their tail where females deposit their bright pink eggs. The males incubate the eggs and carry them to term. This takes about six weeks. On the male's patch, eggs remain exposed to the elements but also protected from any predators. After hatching, newborn leafy sea dragons receive no further parental care. For two to three days after birth, baby sea dragons are sustained by their yolk sacs. After this, they hunt small zooplankton, such as copepods and rotifers, until large enough to hunt mycids. Sea dragons grow to a length of seven inches after one year, reaching their mature length at two years. In the wild, young sea dragons are preyed upon by other fish crustaceans, and even sea anemones. Young sea dragons are delicate and often different color than adults, making them more easy to prey on. The leafy sea dragon is a popular species in public aquaria, and its trade is tightly regulated. There are very few people licensed to collect leafy sea dragons, and a more significant threat to their populations comes from accidental capture in fisheries targeting other species. Their various appendages make them particularly susceptible to this threat. Without continuing careful management of the human activities that affect leafy sea dragon populations, the species could become more seriously at risk of being lost or endangered. They are frequently taken by divers seeking to keep them as pets. In fact, such takings shrank their numbers so critically in the early 1990s that the Australian government placed a complete protection on the species. Pollution and habitat loss have also hurt their numbers. Scientists consider the species to be, to be near threatened with extinction. As you can see in this documentary clip from the 2005 short, from the 2005 short, The Vanishing Dragon, the fish is coveted by many making their frequent capture and subsequent protection unsurprising.
Germany, Austria, America, Norway, and all over. Uh, they come here specifically to run Bay of Iceland. Uh, it's the most well known journey uh, to dive with the leafies. Spotted handfish, scientific name Brachionitsis heristis, are named after their fins, which they use like hands to pull themselves along the ocean floor. They are just as unique as the leafy sea dragon, fish that also inhabit Australia's water, as I just explained. Um, the spotted handfish has a high burst dorsal fin originating on the snout and a long base soft rayed dorsal fin. Spotted handfish are slow moving and prefer to walk on their pectoral and pelvic fins rather than swim. These pectoral fins resemble human hands. The spotted handfish has a dark pink back and a white belly in general, but sometimes are browner, and they have darker orange, brown, or black spots. Spotted handfish grow to be about 7 inches long and their bottom dwelling, meaning that they live in fine silt and sand at depths of 20 to 30 meters beneath the ocean surface. They generally eat crustaceans and small worms and live in shell-filled depressions near rocks projecting from the sand beneath the ocean. The spotted handfish is endemic to southeastern Australia, inhabiting the lower Durant River estuary, Frederick Henry Bay, and the northern regions of Storm Bay. They were much more common throughout these regions prior to the mid-1980s, but a handful of factors have led to their decline since then. As you can see on the map, they live on the Orange Island, Tasmania. Handfish spawn from September to October and lay an interconnected egg mass of 80 to 250 eggs on objects attached to the sea bottom, like sponges, sticks, sea grasses. The females remain with the eggs for 7 to 8 weeks until they hatch. After this time, juveniles hatch from the eggs and drop to the sea floor. They appear to remain in the vicinity of spawning grounds throughout their lives. This has the consequence of colonies remaining relatively isolated, mixing is really restricted, and um, the ability of handfish to recolonize areas that are not very populated. The spotted handfish is listed as critically endangered on both the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species and the ASFB Threatened Fishes Committee listing. The cause of this is yet to be accurately determined, but theories include predation on egg masses and the food supply of the handfish by northern, by an uh, invasive species, the northern Pacific sea star, loss of natural sandy habitat through increased siltation caused by land clearing, heavy metal contamination of sediments, and urban effluent. Um, now the spotted handfish is protected under Tasmanian law, in the Commonwealth's Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act of 1999. Over the last five years, the Australian government has contributed over $390,000 to help ensure the survival of the handfish. They have participated in many projects, including researching and monitoring existing populations, public education and awareness raising, and identifying threats. You can help protect the spotted handfish by donating to conservation efforts, or if you ever happen to be in Australia, joining a local conservation organization or participating in events held by the organization. Thank you all so much for listening to my presentation on these beautiful fish that live in Australia's ecosystems, aquatic ecosystems, and I really hope that you learned something about either the leafy sea dragon or the spotted handfish, and how our behaviors are affecting their lives.